Authors of Dave's Town Rocks. Hello, good evening, welcome to Dave's Tackle Box. It's Sunday the 10th of November 2013. It's Remembrance Day. So uh, I meant to wear my poppy. I forgot to put my poppy on. On tonight's show, uh, we've got a couple of things. I've got a couple of fairly serious subjects that I want to look at. Uh, some stuff that's not serious at all. Uh, that involves footage. What was sent to me from a meet that may have happened yesterday, allegedly. That's a strange noise. <laughs> I'll be joined by him, who's just off camera. Uh, and we're also going to, we're going to be looking this week at atomizers, and I'll tell you why. Because I, I had this moment of inspiration and a little bit of desperation as well, but that'll all become clear. So uh, we'll start with the titles as normal. See you in a minute. And here we are. Find the right button and I'm back on the camera. I'm just getting the hang of this. Three there years is. and I've nearly got the hang of it. Oh, there you go. It's got to be time to change it really, isn't it? Yeah, just about. <laughs> as, soon as, you, as soon as you can work it properly, it's time for a new one. <laughs> right. Uh, all right, let, 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 let's, let's do this properly like on a proper telly show and I'll introduce my guest. Hello, Dave. How are you doing, mate? I'm not doing so bad, Dave. How's yourself? I'm all right. You've got a lower third and everything. Good Lord, and, of and you're, not, well. you're not got right name on as well. He does, doesn't it? It's all colour coordinated and lovely. Red and black and white, the three colours I can see. There you go. How's that? <laughs> <laughs> right, so Dave, a little bit later in the show, we're going to be talking about the knees up. Uh, and you very kindly sent me some footage on that, didn't you? Well, you know, the way you, you do. do. It, and uh, there's a couple of other bits and bobs we're going to look at, as well as this atomizer stuff. Uh, but before we get into that, um, I just I, I said at the top of the show there that, that you know, a, a, a quite a serious subject. Um, and it's a subject that relates to uh, the sponsors of this show, Cloud9 Vaping. Uh, I thought earlier, because I could very easily go into a rant here. So I tried to taper that a little bit by, uh, by actually sitting down in front of a camera earlier so I could edit it if I needed to. Um, <laughs> Watch this little bit of video. I think it's fairly self-explanatory, and then we'll come back, and Dave and I'll chat about it for a minute or two. For more than two years, this show has been sponsored by Cloud9 Vaping. Cloud9 Vaping, if you're watching this, you'll know who they are. They're a very well-respected UK vendor of e-cigarette products, and without their support, this show simply might not exist. Bandwidth is expensive, Cloud9, pay for the bandwidth for this show. They ask for nothing in return. They don't ask us to promote their products. They don't ask us to promote their company. Um, they do this as a straightforward contribution to the vaping community. And I know this because I talked to Lisa and she supports this show in the same way as she supports things like Vape Fest, donating raffle prizes for meats, and, and a whole host of other things that they do for the vaping community. 
Well, during this week, I got a letter from Lisa at Cloud9 Vaping explaining that they've got an issue um, which is very serious for them. And I've taken it upon myself to say my piece and to give back a little bit of that support that, that the Cloud9 have given the community since I've been a vapor. The issue is that another company, a company called Foster's Distributors Limited, have been uh, selling easing products uh, via Home Bargains is one one outlet they're using the uh, the high street shop using the name Cloud Nine Vaporizer or Cloud Nine Cloud Nine e cigarette. Um, now it has been suggested that the uh, sort of ego type battery that they're selling and clearomizer are of very inferior quality to the sort that you would get if you go to Cloud Nine Vaping. .co.uk. There is no association between the two companies and there's potential here for Cloud9's brand to be damaged by these people using that name, that product name. So that's one aspect of it. But the other aspect of it is, and uh, I can say this, uh, Cloud9 have to be very careful about what they say publicly on this, there's a legal process going on. But frankly, that doesn't apply to me. I can say what I like. And I think that the practice of using somebody else's brand name, a company that is well respected, been around since the year dot as far as vaping is concerned and has an excellent reputation for both their products and their customer service, to steal their name, and that's what I see it as, theft of their name, is just plain wrong morally, whatever the legal status. Now, it leaves Cloud9 in a difficult situation. The legal costs to actually uh, to, to get the courts to stop these guys uh, selling these products with the Cloud9 name on them uh, could potentially cost an absolute fortune and so, some seriously scary numbers. Um, so what can we as members of the community do about it? Well, for a start, we can provide evidence of our understanding of Cloud9 vaping. Uh, we can tell people what we think about that brand, what it represents. A testimonial, if you like. I'm going to do this. I know the members of the VTTV team have already done this. If you're a Cloud9 vaping customer, if you see an issue with somebody else pretending to be Cloud9 vaping and selling inferior products, you can help too. Write a testimonial. Talk about how you heard about Cloud9 vaping, about your experiences of dealing with Cloud9 vaping. Say what you think that Cloud9 vaping means to the e-cig market in the UK and the community. Get all of that in an email. Send it to info at cloud9vaping.co.uk and this will enable Lisa and Keith to assemble a dossier which they can hand to their lawyers which will help reinforce their claim to the brand name, if you like. I'm not a legal eagle by any stretch of the imagination, but I'm told that this will be very helpful to them. So just to recap, if you want to support Cloud9 Vaping, mention how you first heard about them, what you think they mean to the UK market, talk about your experiences of customer service and the products, say what you think about how good a brand Cloud9 Vaping is, and say why you're concerned that somebody else might be passing themselves off as Cloud9 Vaping or selling Cloud9 products. Now, I did a bit of Googling earlier and I can't see the Cloud9 product currently being sold uh, at Home Bargains anymore, but I could find uh, sort of forum references and things like that where people had said they'd bought a Cloud9 Vaporizer from Home Bargains and what have you. Um, so hopefully, with these guys are already conceding defeat, that would be great for Cloud9 if they would just give up the ghost without a lengthy court, uh, lengthy and costly court battle for Cloud9 vaping. But your stuff can help, right? Your 
testimonials can definitely help help get them to info at cloud9vaping.co.uk cloud9 vaping make this show possible let's say thanks thanks for listening and there you go and hello again dave hello right so uh obviously we've uh, discussed this a little bit um mm. I, th I think I have no idea what the legal stance, the legal status of all this is. Uh, I'm sure that the Cloud9 are doing everything they need to do to get this put right. My objection to this is purely on moral grounds. You've got a business here that's worked very hard to build the reputation they've got. And you've got another company um, using their name. Now, I, I sent in that little VT there. I, I tried to do some digging online. I I found, uh, I did some digging on Foster's Distributors Limited. Um, it looks like they're no longer selling that Cloud9 product through Home Bargains, but um, you know, the, the suggestion uh, is that they are selling it elsewhere. Um, to me, it's just morally wrong. <laughs> I mean- it, 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 Legally, it's known as passing off. Um, yeah. Where you, you could, I don't know, come up with a range of cornflakes and call yourself Kellogg's. Yes. And you would be prevented legally from so doing and Kellogg's would have every right to take you to court because you'd call yourself Kellogg's. And you can argue that you're blue in your face, you're passing off. In this case, and Chat has just proved it actually, I don't know whether you're following it. Uh, sort of, yeah, I've got, kind of got one eye on it, yeah. Well, everybody's referred to Cloud9 vaping as Cloud9, as we have done for donkey's ages. Yeah. Yeah, it, and it, in the testimonials, it's probably worthwhile when people write in, saying something along the lines of, "I have referred to this to Cloud Nine vaping as Cloud Nine. They are colloquially known as Cloud Nine and have been since their inception." Because I've never, I can't remember putting the vaping on the end. Probably wrong of me, but I've always said you can get it from Cloud Nine. Yeah, and absolutely. everybody knows them as Cloud Nine. Yeah. It's uh, the, which is probably just simply uh, the human trait of shortening things that we all do. Yes. Um, but but uh, you know it's it's undisputable. You talk to anybody on any of the UK vaping forums and say Cloud Nine, they mean Cloud Nine Vaping .co .uk. Exactly right. Lisa and Keith's business. And yep. whatever you might think of that business, for somebody else to uh, to, uh, to 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 pass themselves off you, to use the expression you did. Uh, and, and basically just try and cash in on somebody else's reputation is morally wrong and it's almost certainly going to be legally wrong. Uh, problem is, obviously, Keith and Lisa are going to be very worried about this. Uh, they see it as a threat to their business. Um, there's a suggestion that the uh, the Ego batteries they were selling are, shall we say, not good. And I'm not going to put myself in a position where I could be done for libel or anything. Mm. But it was suggested to me that it ain't joy tech you're getting when you buy an ego <coughs> from from the, home bargains the passer offers exactly yes. so uh, so i mean just just uh, just just to draw a line under that really um you know if if you feel inclined uh and uh, just knowing this community and certainly knowing the audience of this show i'd be surprised if people don't feel inclined summarize that stuff uh like dave said you know Use the term Cloud9, make it quite clear that Cloud9 means something to you and has done uh, and does to the vaping community. Drop it to info at cloud9vaping.co.uk and uh, Lisa and Keith can use that to uh, strengthen their arguments and they'll be passing it on to lawyers and what have you. So um, I'd, I'd just stress as well, you know, uh, it, it happens to be Cloud9 Cloud that are having this problem. Um, Frankly, everybody that supported this show over the years, this 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 station, over the years, uh, I'd do the same. It's just morally wrong. It's that simple. You're right. You're not wrong. It's it's trading on somebody else's goodwill, and that's not good. It is. And uh, the other thing is, don't buy one. <laughs> don't buy one of the duff ones. Support them that way too. Mm. Right, I think we take the first break, we come back, we talk about atomizers. Go for it. And just as we do that, we'll wish Keith and Lisa all the best.
Yep, indeed. End of part one. Cloud Nine Vaping, sponsors of Dave's Tackle Box. And welcome back. Right, now, a, a slightly less serious subject next tonight. And uh, <clears throat> let me tell you how I got to this. Friday night it was. You might remember a couple of weeks ago, I uh, set up uh, the that atomizer that I can't remember the name of, AGI, with a bit of steel rope, which I'd never used before as a wick. And I was sat here on Friday, afternoon and I was using this thing and this is uh, this is my Orion and um, it's a hybrid Genesis mod and I thought oh I know I'll set it up with Steelwick as well because it's dead good this stuff um, <clears throat> but I also got told it works better with ribbon wire now I've had ribbon wire for ages absolutely ages I did try setting up a coil with uh, Canthal ribbon wire months ago I think it was just after the last knees actually because somebody oh, handed me some but I've, I've got a big spool of the stuff here as well but I didn't get on with it and I gave up because I don't really have much patience but I thought no I'm going to have a go and I sat there for an hour on Friday night an hour and at the end of the hour I had a really fantastic coil set up it's possibly the best vape I've ever had I have to say um, but I was knee deep in little strands of steel rope <laughs> There was bits of Canthal, because at one point I was going to give up and I went back to the normal Canthal 0.2 round wire. So there were snippets of that everywhere. There was juice everywhere. I'd burnt my fingers. Um, I'd burnt the desk a little bit because I dropped the steel rope and it was hot. And I sat there and I thought to myself, OK, I've got a nice setup here that's vaping very nicely. But how the hell did I get into this mess? <laughs> <laughs> and I found myself thinking, atomizers never used to be this complicated. And that got me to thinking, do you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to raid the tackle box and all those little plastic drawers I've got. And I'm going to have a look and see how the hell I got to a situation where it takes me an hour to change an atomizer. <laughs> where it used to take me as long as it takes to open the packet and screw the damn thing on. So I'm going to bring Dave in here. On the face of it, right, atomizers seem to be going against the usual pattern of technology and development. <laughs> right? Normally, you start with things that you make yourself and eventually you can buy them out of a packet. <laughs> That's what normally happens with technology. Kind of, kind yeah. of. This seems to be absolutely backwards. <laughs> well, look, I mean, if, if you think in, 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 in the technology world, um, I was involved in the ZX81 and ZX Spectrum. Yeah, and prior I to remember. The ZX80, you know, prior to the ZX80, you built your own, mm -hmm. and I did. And uh, I also uh, invented and built an audio interface for the Commodore PET and all kinds of stuff like that. And then it all went mainstream. 
and you know you go and buy your whatever it is your all in one from Curry's or wherever. But have you seen that all these Arduinos and uh, other make them yourself computers that you that, that you sort out all yourself? It well, looks as though. This is the Raspberry Pi, isn't it? Yeah, that kind of stuff. All of that happening. I'm gonna get one of them, but I've no idea what I'm going to do with it. Um, apparently, you wrap it in two point five millimeter cam file. And <laughs> would, would that it be round? Work very well. Would that be round or ribbon? <laughs> Rib ribbon's better, I believe. <laughs> right. Well, anyway, I I've got it here, right? And the reason I've set the cameras up differently tonight is so I can do things like this and just show you this little my desktop here. And you might be a few seconds behind me seeing this, but what you'll see is a collection of different atomizers, some of which will go, God, I remember them. 401, 901, 801, 510. I actually don't think there's a 401 on there, to be honest. But, yes, you can see there's quite a selection. And I just thought it'd be interesting and a bit of fun just to look at the way the atomizers that we started with, how they sort of evolved into these things. <laughs> <laughs> and why we followed that route because you're a fan of uh, rebuildables aren't you um yeah uh, well in 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 various different terms of rebuildables um I, I, recoilable if you want to call it that um I, i'm a big fan of the squip at the moment oh i've not tried that are you bringing oh. that to ireland next week oh yeah it's going to ireland it right. goes everywhere with me i shall check that out then Oh, 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 it's sex on a stick, I'm telling you. <laughs> it won't be better than this. And so is it. Easy ice. Well, well, we'll have a vape off. <laughs> you, me, and 24 pints of Guinness. <laughs> See who can recoil their eat of choice the quickest after 24 pints of Guinness. Does that uh, an hour? <laughs> uh, Squirt, but... 25 seconds. I hope to be quicker next time. I'm making it down to three quarters of an hour. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, I, I, I use uh, every, uh, almost everything that I've got that I'm using on a daily basis has got a replaceable coil of one sort or another. Either yep. I have the coil or it's got, I, I mean, I'm, I'm really, really enjoying um, the, the Aspire stuff at the minute. Yeah, okay. Because that's that's a replaceable coil and that's ideal. It's brilliant. Um, I, I'm enjoying the scrape and, and obviously I've got me me Jennies as well that I'm enjoying. But yes, almost without exception, with all of them, it does take longer to change the the business end, if you like, than it did back in the days of the nine or one or the four or one. But it's worth it. Um, yeah, very much so. <laughs> it, it, it's we're at that hobbyist end, aren't we? We're, we're, we're oh. talking now about absolutely fine-tuning it the same way as... Uh, I would think we probably qualify, yeah. Yes, yeah, geeks, <laughs> uber geeks. Indeed. Um, it's, a, it's a case of fine-tuning down to the nth degree. I suppose we're like the car enthusiasts that go and put uh, twin double-down draft hollies on and God knows what and get these special leads for the, the distributor and all of that kind yeah, of stuff. Yeah, yeah. Same sort of thing. Right. Well, I'll we're tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to go back to this desktop here now. Go on. Let's get this up on the screen. Right, and uh, I know like there's a slight delay before you'll see I've got it. what I'm looking at, but uh, there's a variety of stuff here, which uh, it's not everything I've tried. Now, if, <laughs> if you're new to vaping, some of this stuff, you'll probably wonder what the hell it is. Um, if you've been around a while, you might wonder what the hell it is, because I'm bought most things <laughs> but when when i started it wasn't the beginning because uh if i just flick back to you dave you started with a 401 wasn't it no no um, no 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 i started with a uh 084 084 that's right sorry 084 yes. believe it or not and this is this is how much full circle it's come oh these are the disposables but they were identical to a vipe in size, the new Viper you right, ordered, right. identical in size. I've ordered um, one of them, it's not arrived yet. Um, and uh, yeah, but had uh, a 401 style atomizer on the top and a juice repository that would hold four drops of liquid. Wow. That was supposed to be 12 fags. <laughs> well, I, I got it pretty easy. 
because I came along uh, sometime after you, a, a mere three years and a couple of months ago, and I started, and I've shown this thing before. This is uh, this is an E-Lights singer-like thing. Yes. And I didn't know it at the time, but it, actually this is a 306 atomizer on there. It is, yes. Uh, which is not a bad atomizer. Unfortunately, it was let down by the battery, which suffers from the same problems as all single light batteries. Like you needed one before you got to change it before you got to work. Yep. Uh, and the cartridge here, which had like a little bit of foil in the top. Yep. Cotton wool under the foil. And uh, with maybe as many as 10 drops of liquid. Um, seven. Probably. <laughs> <laughs> and what you did is you push that on there and the bridge on the atomizer pierced that and it would work and i i did actually try this earlier did, did you use the flick you needed to use the flick to get the juice you, you, down. you kind of whip it it's sort yeah, of centrifugal like as well. get That's the it. juice down onto the onto the coil yeah still works tastes like crap horrible but yeah i mean so, so the 306 was actually quite an advanced atomizer at the time i bought that it but was one of the better testing ones. It was, certainly. I mean, the things, when I started vaping, when I first joined UK Vapors and sort of started talking to people like you, everybody was using, by then, 510s. Yep. And, uh, of course, th this is the thread that won the day, really, isn't it, the 510? Yes, it was the one that we standardised on. Well, not we, but it's the one that everybody standardised on because it worked better than anything else. Of all the mods I've got on the shelf behind me there, all of those, I think there's just one or two that don't take a 510. Uh, in fact, there's probably just one, actually, and that's the screwdriver. Which takes a 901. Which takes a 901, which was um, the other thing that was still popular when I started. So that's a 901 there. I, I rem <laughs> Do you remember the fog? Yes. <laughs> and I remember really summing up my thoughts. That this is an atomizer that's designed with a hole to let the juice flood out. <laughs> in, th in theory, it was designed to let the air flow in, but have the opposite effect and let the juice run As out. As a bonus. So, yeah. but just the we, we talk away about the way these things evolved. This is a 901 atomizer, and uh, just like the 510, you would have a, a cartridge that fitted on the end with a bit of wool in the end, which didn't work very well. Nope. So, so we had things like blue foam. Do you remember? Oh, God. Yeah, I know. I've still got a packet of that unopened. Pyramid tea bags. Da, that that's yes, tea bags, and they'll they'll. they'll <laughs> you remember these? <laughs> yes. Oh, uh, that was where I first did my first tea bag mod. Um, you probably we, should explain what tea bagging is in terms of e-cigs, Dave. Otherwise, somebody will get the wrong idea. Let's let them think about that until we get there, right? <laughs> <laughs> um, but the, this thing, like you know, at, because of the hole and the juice flooding out, people invented this thing. Do you remember the drip shield? Yeah. What a revolution good. that was. Yeah. Which went over the top of this is all dry, but it doesn't matter if I break the O-rings, I'm never going to use it again. It won't even go in, it's that dry. Yeah, it'll be dry as well. But basically the idea is that that fitted over the top of the atomizer. So the juice, as it dribbled out of that hole, collected in there and didn't go all down the side of your mod and over your hand. And you could suck it back into the atomizer as well. And it became a kind of primitive feed system. It was, it was... It, it was uh... A primitive feed system, much like a tank, only much less capacious. But that is kind of the way things started to evolve, wasn't it? I mean, this this is an ego battery, okay? So these things were around and had been around a little while when I started vaping. And they take a 510 atomizer. You could get 901 versions, couldn't you, for a while? Uh, the Reaver. The Reaver did a nine, had a 901, yeah. didn't it? Yeah. And... Um, the 510 atomizer went on like that. And this thread around the edge, which probably a lot of people think is for clearomizers these days, if you've only been vaping in for the last year or so, that wasn't for attaching your atomizer at all, was it? It was for a cone. Yes. Do you remember? There's a cone. That's, that's right. And that was your e-cig. Okay, this is quite a long battery. 
God, that takes me back. I haven't seen a setup like that in years. I had to dig around well deep in the tackle box to find those parts. Uh, this is actually quite a nice atom. This is one of those 1.8 ohm things that I vaguely yeah. used to get. Yes. So, And again, you'd have the cartridge with the foam in the end and you'd drip your liquid in and then you'd put it in there and it would wick a bit. Yes. <laughs> have to, I, I should warn you, Dave, that, that this, this conversation's taken Chris cut back in time. I bet. I, I bet. And she's starting to talk about coconut juice again. <laughs> Well, this is something more from Cat's time. Do you recognise that one? I'm just waiting for it to come. Oh, Lord above, that's... That's an 801, I think, isn't it? It's an 801, yeah. Yeah, this is the, this was the one, the funny one, that uh, was for the, uh, the, the, the stick, the janty stick. Do you remember? Yes. And you used to have to, if you wanted to use a regular 801 in there, you had to do the thing with the paper clip. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that that was Cat's favourite atomizer for an awful long time, well, and they they were brilliant for flavour, but they leaked like a granny with no tenor pads. <laughs> I think I'm right in saying weren't these the ones that were used on the original pen style e things? Yes, yeah. the proper pen styles. Yes, yeah. And and uh, I, I I don't actually have a battery for an 801 battery, but uh, it it was narrower, wasn't it? And it, Got wider at the uh, at the atomizer part. And uh, then oh no, you you were, th you were thinking of the, the switch unit that went onto the eight hundred one because the original eight hundred one was an auto battery. Right there, you go. There you and go. you needed a bread poultice on the back of your neck to get the draw going. It was the airiest draw on the planet. <laughs> you, could, you could seriously, you could lung it with with one lung. They were that airy, um, but the flavour was gorgeous and. You, you only ever needed to take two draws because your hands were covered in liquid because they <laughs> leaked like a bit. I'm terrible for that. Excellent. But, but really nice flavour. And um, then, the, so, so there was that. There were a couple of other atomizer types about. When they, we've talked about uh, 046s, we've talked about 510s, 901s, 801s. What were these things, the mouthpieces from? Um... The, the cigar ones. Uh, that's a 701. 701. I couldn't remember. That's right, 701. I don't actually have the atomizer. I just found the uh, a couple of the cartridges. The screwy in one. The that's seven, the one. That's the one. 701 e-cigar. Uh, e that's uh, the one. That had all of the punch of, well, a glass of milk, really. Yes. <laughs> that's that's it, exactly it right. Easy. And then the other thing that about the time, just about the time I started vaping, came cartomizers. Uh, they were a fairly new thing. When I went to the first vape fest, which was a couple of months, about six weeks maybe after I started vaping, I um, I uh, I got myself a screwdriver mod, and I was using cartomizers. So I had this nine oh one screwdriver with an adapter with five ten cartomizers on them. Oh, you missed out the KR eight oh eight D then, did you? Uh, I've got some of those now, but I did. I skipped that at the time. I, I was. I've kind of always been a five ten boy. Ah right. So, apart from when like things needed a nine oh one. Yeah. So, like the fog. <laughs> yeah. Oh my god. <laughs> that was a shocking piece of kit. I've still got mine. I've um, still got my. Yeah, I tried to sell it. Nobody would have it. So hey, look, it is a cartomizer, an iVapor branded one. Now, if I show this to somebody who's only been vaping a year, they probably think, well, that goes in a tank. But he didn't, did it? No. Nobody I thought of a tank. Would. You so wouldn't know. basically what you would do, and Toby was the one with the advice, I think it was in his strap line on uh, UK Vapors, wasn't it, the instructions? Yes. You pop the top off, fill it with juice, and then put a drip tip in there. <laughs> and uh, and that, that served me really well. Now... I do recall you never really used took to cartomizers, did you? Um, fartos, I did. Yes, I remember the, the fat cartos, the fartos. Yeah, yeah. I, I really, I really liked the fartos because the, the bit that got me about ordinary cartos, bearing in mind I started on the eight oh eights, which fit on a nine oh one battery or almost fit on a nine oh one battery. Um, they just didn't 
hold enough juice to keep me going at all. Yeah. And I was constantly dripping them. Um, but when the fart rose came through, they would take two and a half mil of juice. And the flavour was, was pretty good for the day, considering they how... They were all right. Those, the ones, the totally wicked ones with the Titan tobacco in were OK. Yes, they were. They um, were. And I, 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 bought, I bought about 300 of them in one go when there was a sale on. <laughs> I remember that. And I still have some, and I still occasionally get them out and put them on an auto battery, I've, and it's nice. I know I've got some somewhere, but I couldn't find them earlier when I was when I was looking at them. But I do remember I didn't stick with them for long because they had a habit of leaking. Uh, yeah, if you took them on an aeroplane or if you kept them in your pocket and they got a bit warm, you would find juice dribbling down over your nipple, which is not <laughs> necessarily a bad thing. But people do look at you askance. I mean, it's it's well and, well and good for a nursing mother to have a little stain around yes. the uh, I, don't, I don't really want to look like I'm lactating, to be honest. No, but there you no, go. That's, that was the way I ended up. And Keith did as well, which was a bonus. <laughs> and then, right, OK, so that was basically your lot, wasn't it? The cartomizer was quite advanced. There were those farto things, but they were a bit touch and go. Um, and then a couple of things sort of started to happen. Uh, I think, I'll get, in the, uh, get this right chronologically, I think the first thing that happened was... The clear remiser. And um, the clear remiser was, let's face it, it was anticipating greatly, wasn't it? That's not actually a clear remiser. I should have checked the packet before I opened them. You think it was CE2s? Those are CE2s, yeah. Yes, there was the CE2 clear remiser. Well, uh, these, these are the metal ones. I thought I'd got the clear ones here. Oh, my God, no. no. If, they, if they've been anywhere near any juice, they'll have dissolved and rotted long enough well, since. I think you might be right. I've got that. That's, I that's a G4, I think. <laughs> but, yes, the CE2. So now we can talk about teabagging. <laughs> These cartomizers came out, and, and I'm just going to go to camera for this. There was so much ho hype about these things. Hype and hope, I would say. Um, I won these... <laughs> in a raffle at Vape Fest 2010, I think. I think that's where they came from. And I thought, wow, that's brilliant. I've got some of these CE2s. And uh, they were they were quite tricky to get hold of for a little while, weren't they? And, and tricky to get into. I'm trying to now. I've found one. And they were supposed to be the ultimate vaping experience. <laughs> and I'm telling you now, they were rubbish. There you are. One on screen. There you go, sir. There you go. That and is a CE2 clearomizer. Smoked CE2 clearomizer. Um, a new revision of that came out every week. Yes, I think this is this is probably a version 461. <laughs> and they were shocking things. And they didn't wick at all. No. So you'd fill them up, which was a bit of a faff compared to filling a cartridge or even a, a, a sort of um, a, a wall stuffed cartomizer and um, but these things they were terrible you well, fill the, them the, up and it would just taste burnt I've got some of the extra large ones here as well yeah the, be the better vendors even used to ship them with a, a, a properly sized hypodermic needle to enable you to fill them that's without right breaking the seals that's right, and I think I had those in this pa these packets, but they've uh, probably been binned over the years. Um, but what you used to have to do to get them to wick was take them apart and put in some wicking material. And that one thing that worked reasonably well for that was the the material that tea bags are made of. <laughs> and that was that was also when the phrase. Um and this happened quite a lot during our shows. People would say they were sitting fluffing their wicks. To, to, That's to try. Right. Yeah, so folks were taking them to bits because the outside just slides off. <laughs> and I, honestly, this were, is the clear remiser to be sure. It's the CE2, yeah. Yeah, right. Now, t t take the outside of the CE2 off, fluff your wicks, mess about. That's there were even later on, there were tanks that came out that would take the CE2 innards. Bear. That's right. And I've got them somewhere. Guess what I've got here? Guess what I've got here? This is. An Ari tank. That's the bomb. And what you would do with the Ari tank, you can see inside there is a clearomizer, which has 
this has been there a while as you can see it's gone a bit of a funny orange color <laughs> but uh that is the innards of a ce2 clearomizer and that sort of pushed into the tank and that that that's the Harry tank and the, uh, the the original map tank maybe you can remember the original map tank made by most angry pirates do you remember that did yes. that use a clearomizer yes it did didn't same, it? same yeah. as the Harry. yeah that and the Harry and this, this was a, a, a uk or scottish version that came from harry i haven't, I haven't heard from harry from a lot it was scottish because it was cheaper <laughs> that's brilliant so uh yeah so that was one of the first carto tanks that was around and mm. um it worked okay actually it worked okay it leaked a bit and it wasn't the fault of the tank it was the cartonizer it scattered your gob yeah i mean the, the vapor out of those was hot very very hot and quite often burned horrible horrible <laughs> thank god those days ago <laughs> But so so that was uh, the the CE two and the clearomizer and the other thing that came out at about the same sort of time uh, and and I can remember when these came out it was January two thousand and eleven was the Ego T tank mm -hmm. and this is quite good if I go back to this Ego which has got the cone and the five ten on it you basically got a cone shaped atomizer which screwed onto your battery like that and then for the first time we saw these tanks which uh, pushed into that cone shaped at atomizer and that was it yep this juice is horrible <laughs> I, I took it out of the packet earlier but it's years old that's what they called new old stock. But as you can see, it works. It's it's uh, somebody's RY four that is. Mm. Is that what came in the in the uh, the tank? Mm. Oh, that's TW RY four then. Must be. It yeah. Doesn't taste that right. bad actually. It's, it's great. It's, uh, it's twenty two, by the way, Dave. We'd better shift along, haven't we? Uh, oh, I was going to say our prediction was right. We <laughs> did say we talk <laughs> talk for hours about these things. So that basically just shows the way these things kind of evolved and it was all about trying to get the damn things to wick, wasn't it? It's, it's always been about wicking. It's never been about anything else. You can get the power to them dead easy. It's getting the damn things to wick. Yep. From year one, it's been getting, about them, getting them to wick. That's all it's ever been about. I think uh, we're going to have to touch this subject again and get onto the subject of rebuildables. I oh, think we started coming in. You could probably run a 30-part series on this and do 20 minutes every week. You probably could. But we don't really have time for that tonight. Not tonight, no. No. Nah. Because <laughs> um, just before I go, here's a couple of other sort of clearomizer type things which you uh, may or may not recognise. Let me flick it back up. The G4 cartomizer. Oh, God. They were nice for about two hours after you got them. Yeah. And then I, I remember when I was out in Munich, I filled one of these up uh, just before I went to bed. Had a couple of drags off it, put it on the bedside table on top of a silver bullet, I think. Yep. And then uh, when I woke up in the morning, all of the juice had gone. I never Inter found it. Interestingly, though, that technology <laughs> paved the way for all of the pro tanks and Davids and what have you of this world because it they're using did. the same technology, only it works now. Indeed, absolutely right. There's this little thing, remember these things? This one's got a little pump, I can't remember what it's called, but it's got a little pump built on the side to assist with the wicking. Yeah, I've got some of them as well. It didn't. It didn't work. No. You had to press that little springy button thing on the inner. Yeah. Smart tank, I think it were called. Yes, but it wasn't very smart. Ha! Ah, we'll we'll come back to this. That very boring types that in. There you go. There you go, smart tank. So, uh, yeah, we'll come back to that. Because uh, mm. that's the first rebuildable that I had, which is the bully. Yeah, I've got one of them as well. And I didn't persist with it, but I've obviously come back to rebuildables. So um, we'll uh, we'll have a look at that. We'll follow that up next week or the week after, probably. 
that's why you've got the 701 carts because they're fitting the bully. Exactly right. That's exactly yeah. why I've got them. Exactly right. <coughs> okay. All right. So, uh, yeah, we ran out of time on that one. And I do want to show you the footage from the knees meet because he spent ages <laughs> editing it. So, uh, can, I, can I just answer Jeff Caldicott? I don't watch see the why footage not. From, watch the footage from the knees meet, Jeff, and you will find out what that pass-through is because he ain't a pass-through. <laughs> I'm intrigued. Watch this space, folks. We'll be back after this. of Dave's Tackle Box. Iveber and Iveber Alexa, best in Yorkshire for your EC needs. That's iveber.co.uk and iveber-alexa.co.uk. Iveber and iveber-alexa.co.uk are proud sponsors of vapertrails.tv. And welcome back. Right, so uh, there was a bit of a gathering in the uh, northeast yesterday, I believe. Aye, uh, there was, though. And, uh, I, you know, I mean, I'd rather pretend it didn't happen because I work on the basis that if I can't go, then you shouldn't have a meet because it's not fair. <laughs> <laughs> but no, uh, I, I understand that a great time was had by all. Uh, Dave took a camera and uh, Sav pointed it for large portions of this video, I understand. Savcam. Complicated Savcam. Complicated Savcam while you wandered around with a microphone. Yep. I was I was asking you ladies to speak into my stick. Seems fair enough. Let's have a Worked look at it. Jimmy Savile. <laughs> Did he really say Did he really say that? Let's... <laughs> Roll VT. We're here. Um, in the... Where are we? In the pub. In the pub, the new Crown Hotel in South Shields at the Knees Meet, the November Knees Meet, which was organised very, very quickly, almost on the spur of the moment. And as you can see, there are all kinds of people here. I'm going to dive over there and talk to this chap here. Hello. Hello. What's your name? Hey, Stephen. Stephen, where are you from, Stephen? Uh, Bladen. Bladen? Yeah. That's fairly local to where we are up here. Yeah. And uh, what time did you get here? Uh, one o'clock. You enjoying yourself? Yeah, uh, yeah. Good time. Met, met a few nice people? Yeah. What you been vaping on? What you got it's, with uh, you? R Y4 custard. R Y4 custard. Yeah. R Y4 custard. R Y4 custard. And what's it in? What's it on? It's on a Nemesis and an RSST. A Nemesis and RSST. Is that a real Nemesis or a clone one? It's a fast tech one. Fast tech one. And this young gentleman over here has a very very interesting hairdo. I'm going to go over there now. So your name is? My name's Fred. Fred, and you're uh, on the All About forum, aren't you? I am. And whereabouts are you from? I'm from Wall's End. Wall's End and Blayton. Opposite sides of the river from each other, aren't they? Aye. 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 Uh, what time did you I've get here? To, I've had to bring my passport to get here. Oh, of course, yes, because you're the wrong side of the river for a Geordie lad. <laughs> I'm not a Geordie, though. Are you not? Where are you from? Uh, originally Gloucestershire. Gloucestershire? Uh, originally. You haven't got a Gloucestershire accent? No, no. I haven't got an Indian accent, but I spent a lot of time there as well. <laughs> That's all good. Aye. So what, 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 there's a barrel load of stuff here. Yeah, most of it's not mine. So what are you vaping on? What am I vaping on? Um, aniseed, licorice and blackcurrant. 
I'm a safe yeah. fusion yeah. current, yeah. which I tried earlier on. It's very sweet, and very yeah, aniseed. It's, it's very sweet and very aniseed, very black currently. Very, very, nice very well. Moorish. And, and that's in a pro tank, by the way. It's in a pro tank, yes. On top of a lava tube, mini lava tube. Very old one. It is. That's there's two very old lava <laughs> tubes here today. That's all good. I'm going to move over to there next because there's a whole load of folks there from Yorkshire. They've come up from Yorkshire. We'll talk to them now. I was going to say there's a face here that everybody will know, and it's Rusty, but it isn't. It's Ray. <laughs> Lovely, am I? Did, it, did I hear right? Rusty's gone to the bar? Yes, yes. Yes. <laughs> really? You want to check in sober? Is he driving? No. He's not. Tomorrow. Are you driving? No. Tell everybody what your name is. Julie. Julie. And what are you vaping on? Blackcurrant menthol, made by my good partner here. Is that partner as in friend or partner as in? Partner tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Congratulations, sir. <laughs> How choosy are you? Because I see Ray's got a big smile on his face. Just depends how many I have tonight. I see. <laughs> Try to set a good example here, you know. She's <laughs> from Barnsley, sir. Barnsley? I'm from Barnsley. From Barnsley. Barnsley, South Yorkshire. So, yeah. does that know that de, big, big Marco Van Barnsley? That no, Marco Van Basten on uh, uh, VTTV, like? No, I don't. I don't know. Not hey, at all. God. That coming up here talking like that, they'll be they'll be kicked out the fortnight. So. <laughs> I can't talk like you. <laughs> no. I can talk like you. I know you can. <laughs> so get the coit, you fool. Get the coit. Get the coit. <laughs> uh, here's ten pence. Go and, go and phone my mother and tell her that's cool. <laughs> Now there's a young gentleman here who has a box in his hand, very similar to a box I have in my hand. Uh, the reason I've got the box in my hand is because it was given to me earlier on. I've stuck a square on it. Introduce yourself. I'm Nigel. He's Nigel. And I'm on uh, UK Vapors as Soul Vapor Baby. Say that again. Soul Vapor Baby. Soul Vapor You look nothing like a baby. <laughs> So what, what, what are these boxes called, Nigel? Uh, that one is called the copper. The copper. Uh, because of the finish, uh, antique copper finish, I Antique, thought. yeah. And it's got a DNA 20 it's in it? It's got the DNA 20 in it with a 18650, uh, 2800 milliamp battery in it. And as I, as I said, I've got the squirt on top of this and I'm running it at 11 watts. I need gorgeous and really really rather nice so you you you're making these in in quantity for sale yes yeah uh, i'm i'm gonna do about six to ten a month mm -hmm. because uh the hardest part is cutting it measuring it all out then i have to send it away to get it coated bring it back and then a good three hours of soldering to get it all fitted nice inside indeed well i'm gonna say this now on on First look, I haven't put this down since it's got put in my hand. It's working really well. We will be looking at it on the Hayes Hour, uh, which is all good. Now, there's a young lady here who has a very unusual name. Can you just swizzle around a little bit? Because I've not come across your name before. Tell everybody who you are. My name's Marita. Okay, and where are you from, Marita? South Africa. Right. <laughs> I'd never heard an accent like that in Yorkshire before. Now. No, it's new to Yorkshire. <laughs> so how long have you been over here? About 16 years now, yeah. Oh, right. And you with Nigel? Yeah. Damn. I know. <laughs> Such a shame. He brought me over. <laughs> Did you? Yes. Oh, yeah. I didn't realise you could do that from South Africa. I thought it would have only happened in Thailand. <laughs> yeah. in Russian, Russian bride. <laughs> Russian bride. South African bride. Yeah, Russian bride. Yeah, Russian bride from South Africa. Well, that's, that's all good. And you're a vapor too, yes? I am, yes. So what are you vaping on? Uh, this is a menthol from Totally Wicked. Uh -huh. Very nice. And Very has Nigel not given you a copper? That is too strong for me. I, I don't have the lungs for that. It's taken me a year to get on with the <laughs> copper. She was on postures for first year. Oh, right. Yeah. I put you enjoying it. Oh, very much. And how are you enjoying the knees, mate? Definitely. I've just just discovered. I mean, this is taking me by surprise. It really has. Look who's here. It's only Catherine Devlin. What are you doing here? That's him. I know he's, he's <laughs> stood behind me. He's not in shot. <laughs> What are you doing up here? Why well, did you come? It's the knees mate, isn't it? It is. And I thought, do you know what? It's about blooming time that we shifted us and came up here. Well, I didn't want to say that, but you're not wrong, are you? I know. 
<laughs> well, here we are. I mean, since you don't come to Vape Fest anymore, I can't... we had to chase you down to your home turf, you see. I can't come to Vape Fest anymore. I know. Because it's always in bloody August. I know. And I'm always on holiday in I bloody know. August. So, so we've up. tracked you down to the North East. It's amazing. I'm and it's get a arrested. very, very long way. Not for me, it's not. <laughs> <laughs> well, it was for us. We set off at 10 o'clock this morning. Oh, well, that's late. And arrived at, what is it now? Quarter to five. Quarter to five. Gee, yeah, no, but we'll not be shutting shop until 12. Yeah, OK. So you'll get home by five I'll in the morning. I'll be asleep soon <laughs> anyway, so yeah. What you brought with you? Me touch wood, obviously. You're never without that, No. Are you? no and what you got on top? Vivinova. Uh-huh. Have you seen the new Vivinovas? I have with the silver casing. Oh, I was thinking I in terms like of the... Uh, oh, a new one. The a new, new, new one. A new, new one. I don't do new. Well, I've got one you can I was have a on try. a 901 for the first year of my vaping. I don't do new. So was it I. It took me so long to be convinced to try 510. Uh huh. Now that I have this that works uh -huh. reliably for me all the time, why uh -huh. would I want to change it for something else? Oh, so the quality and efficacy and. Uh... Hey, it works. <laughs> Great stuff, and of course, you'll be in London on Tuesday, won't you? I will. It's I'm in London on Monday as well, actually, bizarrely yeah. enough, doing some filming for the BBC, as you do. Oh, yes. Yeah, you know. Did you know I'm doing something for the ITV? Oh, you were doing ITV? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Fancy that. I see. Who'd have thought? Yeah, I know. Bloody well, this isn't it? Absolutely. Okay. It's tremendous. Cut! Yes, please. <laughs> God! Stop us, please! Right, okay. So that was the knees. That looked really, 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 really good. It was that good. I haven't been to bed yet. <laughs> Excellent stuff. Um, and there's another meet next week. I don't know whether you yeah. know this. Oh, I, yes, I am aware. And am uh, aware. there's somebody uh, wants me to take my Fagatti so they can throw money at me for it. So I'm leaving it at home. I might take mine then. You take yours. You take your Fagatti. But sell it to me if you're going to sell it, because... I could do with a spare. <laughs> so I've no idea, really. Uh, I've, I had a quick look at the Vape Fest Island website. It looks like there's going to be loads of people there. I'm mm -hmm. just basically going, as they say locally, uh, for the crack. I should be there for that as well, yes. And I'm taking my darling wife as well. So I gather. So I yeah. gather. Uh, it's worth a quick note here. Uh, it would be uh, great to uh, to know if Andy's going to make it along. Uh, Andy's little one's poorly at the moment, so uh, yes, just yeah. uh, best wishes to Andy and to DJ. I uh, hope everything gets sorted out soon for you guys. Um, but uh, I shall be going. I've hired a little car. I shall be arriving, I don't know, late morning-ish on the Saturday. Wait, wait. 
we're going over on the Friday. I've yet to do the car hire. That's that's to be done tomorrow. Um, and then, yes, we'll get there Friday, stay overnight, ready for a bright and early start, because apparently they serve Guinness for me at the clock in the morning, which is good for me. That works, that works. And uh, I'm staying over this time as well, so uh, I'll be able to have a pint as well on Saturday. Uh, right. It's time to go. Time to say goodnight to Quentin Indeed. Chris there. Uh, Dave, thanks ever so much. We'll finish this atomizer discussion, or at least continue it. Uh, uh, on an episode fairly soon uh, I'll be back uh, same time next week uh, maybe with some footage of Ireland who knows if you could stand up as I was just, just sound so I was here for a moment might happen <laughs> <laughs> we've got to go Dave thanks very much and to everybody that's been watching thanks for watching Bro. see you next week bye Thank you.